Welcome back, everyone. Our next speaker is Dr. Griebler, who is currently Assistant Professor of Medicine at Cleveland Clinic, the Director of the Diabetes, Diabetes Center and Obesity Programs at the Endocrinology and Metabolic Institute, and also the Subspecialty sub Director for the Weight Management Enterprise Center at the Cleveland Clinic. His presentation today is entitled, Managing Your Weight While Living with Diabetes. And just a reminder, we'll have some Q&A at the end if, if uh, participants want to type in their questions. Thank you, Dr. Graveler. Well, thank you for having me here. All right. So, let, so let's get started. This is a very nice and interesting topic that I love to talk about. That's endocrinology. We see a lot of patients with diabetes, and uh, we also know the importance of uh, weight management, and it's nothing better than combine uh, these two topics uh, together. So today we'll be talking about why it's so important to manage your weight, not only for diabetes, but also for your overall health. Uh, uh, I'm gonna give you some tips and tools to maintain and also to lose weight living with diabetes. And uh, I wanna, you also to understand that weight manages much, much more than only diet and exercise. This is an old uh, say uh, and, uh, uh, research uh, is very heavy, uh, telling us that there is much more uh, uh, that goes into weight uh, management. So those are two diseases. Obesity is considered a disease. Diabetes is also considered a disease. And uh, we should combine both together because uh, obesity is one of the leading causes that uh, of diabetes. Um, and uh, if we treat obesity, if we help patients to lose weight, we will also be treating uh, diabetes for sure. So we, uh, we are, unfortunately, over the last uh, many years in what we call our obesogenic environment, we have really easy access um, uh, to food, and usually they are high energy, density food. Unfortunately, the cheap food, uh, the cheap things that we have available are not the, the most healthy as well, we have a lot of uh, availability of liquid uh, calories uh, in, in sodas and, and other things. Um, leisure and activity nowadays, we are doing less exercise. Uh, maybe there is also a component of unsafe streets. Uh, we, we do a lot of indoors entertainment with movies, TV, cell phones. And um, there is really a big social, economic, and cultural uh, uh, with uh, uh, body image, and we also have problems with income, that all these lead to, to poor uh, nutrition and unfortunately uh, uh, weight gain leading also to diabetes. So there is a really a lot of work that we have to do. If you compare, this is where we were in 1994 here in the United States. If you see a majority uh, of the cases, the, the, the frequency of patients with obesity will be like 14, 15 percent and the frequency of diabetes for uh, to 5% uh, across the United States. Look where we are in 2014. Actually, more than 26% uh, of patients uh, with obesity across the US and diabetes getting close to 10% uh, or, or even more. So there was really, there is a shift of prevalence of these uh, two diseases over the last uh, 10, 15 years. So we are using the term diabetes more and more. So the diabetes, is a, diabetes is a new term, terminology that we use to associate uh, obesity and diabetes because there is an overlap between diseases. Uh, obesity affects nearly 40% of a popula our population right now and is associated with a lot of comorbidities. Obesity is associated with most cases of diabetes. It's one of the drivers uh, for preventable chronic diseases. And uh, and uh, despite weight loss being associated with dramatic improvement in these comorbidities, most of the time as a clinician, we focus much more on disease-specific treatment. So we talk about di uh, diabetes treatment, hypertension, but we are not talking to the patient about how to lose weight, and though that weight loss will certainly help with the other diseases. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about uh, this combination of obesity and, uh, and diabetes. Uh, obesity will be 
tar targets pretty much all organ systems of our body, leads to hypertension, uh, reflux, uh, uh, joint disease, gout. So any any organ system of your body, if you think about obesity, can cause a problem. So it's it's really a, a, a endemic problem that we have to do a better care, helping patients uh, to. To, to lose weight and treat these comorbidities. So how do we treat patients with obesity? And obviously, how do you treat patients uh, with diabetes? Well, this is a very, very important graphic, okay? I can, I can help patients to lose weight. Uh, usually, uh, those patients will come, they're gonna have a lot of motivation, and uh, we can lose uh, like three, in three to six months, a, a, a nice weight correct, depending on the, the intervention that we do. But then it comes the problem. Uh, most of the time, the weight loss is stops, plateau, and patients get disappointed, and the weight regain comes. People come, they do diets, they lose weight. There is a lot of caloric restriction on diets, and obviously you decrease the caloric intake at some point, uh, you will lose weight, but that's usually for a period of time. And after that, even though they, they are doing the same thing that they were doing months or weeks ago, they don't see the same results and then the disappoint comes and the weight regain comes. So it's uh, this vicious cycle. So we, we need to be aware, we need to acknowledge this. And, and, uh, and there are tools uh, that I'm gonna show you today that we're gonna target uh, to, to avoid this type of situations. So we need to forget the concept of calories in, calories out. So old say that just to stop eating or do some more exercise, decrease your calor calories or, or burn more calories, you'll be fine. It's much more than that. It's much more complex than that. We do know that. It's a connection we, should, we call the gut brain connection. So there are so many variables uh, among your gut, your hormones, your brain, that will be responsible for this set point uh, to keep your weight uh, as it is. Um, and that's what we are calling now uh, a weight set point. That's pretty much a failure of our, our body leading to an elevation of a weight set point. And usually that elevation will, will, will happen slowly throughout our life. And now our body's kind of defending that set point and there is a metabolic adaptation for that. So patients do diets, for example, at some point they will be hungry and, and that's the defense. You're gonna eat more or they're gonna slow down. They will be tired, they're gonna sleep, they, they will be cold. So your body's always fighting back uh, as a, 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 a protection uh, to avoid the starvation. So that's usually what we see and, and we do need to change that. Um, uh, metabolic adaptation is something very, very common. You know, patients lose weight and then the weight regain because there is more hunger, there is more desire to eat. And all this is, uh, is due to hormonal changes. Uh, the, 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 the hunger hormones, uh, when, you, when you start fasting for too long, the, that hunger hormones will be quite high and will make you eat. So those things we do need to address. Uh, so basically when I see a patient, those are the things that we are always going to be discussing. It doesn't matter if a patient has diabetes or not, obviously diabetes, uh, uh, you can make a huge improvement on, on diabetes control when you lose weight, but we do need to talk about, so things that we're going to bring that set point down will be dietary changes, correct? It's more, it's not diet is a nutrition change, behavior changes. We don't like patients to be dieting. We wanna help them to, to make the right choices. Stress management, lifestyle, exercise, sleep, all those things are very important. So patients come to me and they are exercising, they seem to be eating okay, but they don't lose weight. And then you ask, how are you sleeping okay? Well, I don't sleep at all. Are you, how is your stress, stress is being very high, I work in two, three jobs. So those stress, that stress will increase some stress hormones that will make more difficult to lose weight. And then there are other things that will decrease the set point that will be weight loss medications that we use and it's okay. It's, uh, it helps a lot to change that uh, set point and uh, more on the extreme uh, uh, options uh, that it, it's very reasonable for a group of patients will be bariatric surgery. Okay, and then the, all the other things will keep this set point high uh, 
and uh, uh, and we really need to avoid that. And I'll be talking over the next few slides about this. So these are examples uh, that I have of weight set point. As you can see on this graph, this is a weight graph in pounds. It's a patient uh, that uh, started losing weight, lost weight, and you see after two years, or well, sorry, one year, regain all the weight back. This is another example, slowly lost weight, and then boom, in a matter of uh, one or two years, we gained all that weight back exactly what he was, the patient was before. Here is another example as well, sh showing how strong this weight set point is. It's a real thing that we do need to, uh, to address, it, uh, very importantly. Um, so let's talk about the diabetes treatment, obesity treatment, and give you some tips on, on how to, to live with diabetes and, and also control your weight. Um, so when the patient comes to me, patient usually already try uh, some lifestyle changes. So it's time to get some professional help, correct? And we, we do help with that. We, we have a multidisciplinary team that is very important. And then a lot of times we will talk about pharmacotherapy, anti-obesity medications, uh, and other new medications for diabetes that actually can help to, to lose weight as well. And I'll talk about that in the, uh, later. Um, so the, the, the core principles, the pillars of obesity and diabetes uh, treatment will be the nutrition, the exercise, appetite control. That is, it's a tough thing to control. And uh, a lot of people, uh, um, a lot of people, they, they think it's a lack of willpower, the appetite, but they actually, like I explained before, is a, um, uh, it is a it is a, a really a hormonal thing related to the set point. It's sleep hygiene, stress management, and also manage of all, all the other comorbidities. Very very important. Um, here are some examples that we see. So a patient comes, uh, moved uh, to Cleveland, got a new job, stress was up, gained weight, start a diet, was able to sustain for a few months, then regain the weight, start a medication. Uh, lost some weight and then stopped the medication, we regained, and then we had uh, medication lifestyle and that was more sustainable. So that's what we see uh, quite often uh, in our patients. Uh, so here is some, some, some recommendations for weight management. So diet, uh, I do say that there is no perfect diet. There is no diet that is the best one. Any diet will be as good as uh, the amount of weight loss achieved and as good as the patient can comply. Uh, weight reduction, reduction obviously is a primary aim. Um, it, it makes sense that patients with diabetes, uh, if they, they have a diet with low carb, they will require less uh, insulin or, or, or less medications, but it doesn't necessarily mean that all patients with diabetes need to be on a, a low carb diet. Uh, Physical activity, I will talk a little bit more, but it's very important, not just aerobic exercise, meaning walking, running, biking, but also resistance training. And I will show in the next slides, I'll talk a little bit more. So resistance training weights actually is probably the best way to sustain uh, and maintain weight loss. Uh, always have to have an evaluation for sleep. A lot of patients will have sleep apnea that will be untreated and the stress uh, is big and it can trigger weight gain. So we always have to address that as well. Now, here is an example of a few different diets, probably you heard about Atkins diet, zone diet, learn diet. Do you see there is few patients that will lose a lot of weight. Uh, an average weight loss will be seen. Some patients will lose nothing. And, uh, and some patients actually may even gain weight. Uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the graph is very similar independently of the type of the diet because that's usually the response that we see. We are not still on a precision uh, uh, medicine. Uh, we we want to go there where we can target therapies. Each patient is different, but we still don't know until we, we try. Maybe in a few years, we're going to have genetic tests that, that will say, take this medication, we will do well. Or... Um, or we say this is the, the right diet for you. We are still not there, but I, I'm very hopeful that it will be in the future because we do see different responses uh, to, to diet for sure. Um, okay. 
Now, this is a, 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 just a big slide showing the importance of the other things as well. Uh, stress, sleep, very important. I always tell patients never, never change a good night of sleep for like early exercise if you're tired. You do need to sleep eight hours per, per day. Ideally, very important that will help you to lose weight for sure and give you more energy during the day. Okay, so why we should exercise? I, I, I really enjoy talk, talking about this topic here. Uh, this is a busy slide, um, but let me see uh, the next. Okay, yes, so this is a busy slide, but we'll spend uh, uh, one or two minutes here, and I, I, I hope I can show you the importance of the exercise with this slide. So how do we burn calories, meaning, meaning our energy expenditure, okay? There is this, probably half of that is what we call a resting metabolic rate, you know, to get your system going. You're always burning some energy there. Then on, when you eat, you also uh, will burn some calories. And then the, the need, meaning your, uh, you know, ADLs, that, like the usual things that you're doing, walking, moving a little bit, uh, or, or just moving your body, that, that, that will burn some calories. And then the extra, it will be the, the, the exercise amount. And, and it varies, obviously, person to person. So those are the way that you are burning calories. And obviously, this is the calories out, and then the, the, the calories that you take. And overall, you have this metabolic rate that you're burning on a daily basis. And it, you'll be balanced, and, uh, and the weight is going to be stable. So how... So our goal here is increase your energy expenditure. You can do that with the aerobic exercise, I mean, walking, running, uh, biking. Yes, you will burn more calories. That that blue, sorry, that uh, green thing, the exercise will 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 increase. But you are only burning calories when you are exercising. So in the ideal scenario, you want to increase your resting metabolic rate, meaning. You want to burn more calories when you are doing nothing, meaning when you are sitting. How do you increase your metabolism? People say, okay, how do I increase my metabolism? So that's the secret. You know, you need to build muscle mass. So there is a misconception that uh, that uh, the weight for you to, to, to lose uh, weight is aerobic exercise. Actually, aerobic exercise is fine, but you should actually increase your muscle mass because you're going to be burning more calories. You, at rest, you'll be burning more calories when you have a better muscle mass, okay? So this is a very, very important thing. And I always tell patients, let's add some resistance training, some weights, and that to long-term, that's 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 a very good move. Um, okay, next one here. We also have to be aware of this individual variability. Everybody responds differently. The same way that I show you the different diets, people respond differently. Exercise is the same thing. Medication is the same thing. So people respond differently. Our job is to try to figure out how the patient will respond and how we can help them doing that. Okay. And then uh, this is just one example. There is some weight compensation when you exercise because there is, uh, with aerobic exercise, patients end up eating more. You have more appetite. Uh, it's not unusual to have a, a, a like unhealthy behaviors when you do a healthy behavior. So you do your exercise, you feel well. Now I can drink my wine at night, and 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 kind of you know it's a washout um, for sure. So 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 just get, keep that in mind. So that's another thing that I emphasize: uh, the the building the muscle mass. That's that's very good. And when I tell patients about the exercise, I, I divide in three. The one is, uh, and it's not unusual for me to see patients that are not exercising at all. So the only thing that I tell them, start doing exercise, okay? Let's get the motivation for you to get going. Put it, this as a habit, as a routine in your life. Just be consistent, be careful, start slow and good. So you, you go from zero to start doing, even if it's once a week or twice a week. Just get that, feel better and, and go. Then the next time they come, or when, when they are already uh, consistently doing exercise, then we go to the next one. So let's increase your exercise amount. How can you do that? Well, you can increase your intensity. So you do more weights, or you, do, or you run faster, for example. You can increase frequency. Instead of once a week, you do twice a week. 
three three times a week or the duration correct you can do 30 minutes 40 minutes 50 minutes so you are on the la next level so you are doing that more frequently and then the third level i kind of joke with patients will be there competition level so you're good so let's go to the next one should you sign up for a 5k should you start doing more cross training so those are uh, the exercise stages that i tell the patients um uh because i really believe that exercise is one of the most important things for patients with diabetes patients to lose weight or to maintain the weight that they are losing okay so exercise prescribed exercise very important uh, so what else well, um, here at the, our endocrinology institute, we, we see patients in group settings, and I think that's very important. I'm going to give some examples on the real life. Why is that? Well, because you share experiences, correct? We have a group of eight, ten patients meeting on a monthly basis for, for, for one hour and a half. We, we, we give a talk about the topic, maybe diet, maybe exercise, and we address all concerns, all issues of each patient uh, individually, but in a group. Okay, and we do know that it's not just weight loss. Patients will lose weight, but they feel better. They start exercising more. They feel that the appetite is better controlled. They st start sleeping well, and that's what we are looking for: quality of life improvement on, on quality of life. Um, now, what are topics that we should discuss? And 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 these is tips that I give to you about uh, you know how you can live with diabetes and, and weight loss. Well, set up a goal. Right? Think what you want to do, what you're trying to achieve. Is it to control your A1C, is lose a few pounds here and there, or is to be more active? So what is your goal? Set up goals, realistic goals. Learn food labels, how to read food labels. Then you're going to know that you're eating healthy or not. Self-monitoring, correct? Check your blood sugars you, uh, and know what's happening. You, you are the best advocate to yourself. We talk about the exercise, all the benefits of exercise that I told you before. We help you to understand uh, how to shopping for healthy food. We, we talk about uh, how important it is to sleep and the relationship of sleep with weight, how to prepare food. A lot of eating is not about diet, but, it's already, uh, but preparing uh, food where you are always making the right choice. If you don't prepare, you're going to be in a rush. You're going to eat maybe not the best option. You go to the cafeteria, you eat something fast, and you don't make the right choice. We talk about different diets. Like I said, there is no perfect diet, but there are Mediterranean diet, keto diet, other diets. Talk about how much sugar you find in some food, uh, the importance of drinking water, okay? Some patients, some people, if they have a busy life, meal replacement may be the best option, correct? You don't need to think about, you just go get your shake or something else or bar, and you are healthy. You, you are good to go for a few hours. So I do that myself quite often. So that's also important. We help patients to, to understand how to cook. Uh, we do have psychologists to talk about emotional eating. A lot of those eating is not because patient is hungry, but is emotional. Uh, so we, we do need to, to, to talk about that as well. I mentioned weight plateau set point. People and need to be aware that's a reality, but it's a physiological reality. You, you don't need to be disappointed about that. You will expect that at some time you're not going to see the weight loss. It, people don't lose weight all the time, and it's okay. As long as you understand and as long as we use tools for that, we should be fine. We do use a lot of weight loss medications. I'll briefly mention about some, and some patients will benefit from that and uh, will help to change the set point, and we should do that. Okay, um, so I, I, I we discuss quite often uh, about set point. We set up goals. We reset goals. We need to find the right balance. We should acknowledge that life is usually unbalanced. And I'll be surprised when I see a patient that everything is always doing way great. It doesn't happen. That's not real life. There are weeks that you're doing great. Some weeks there are some issues with your diet or your stress, your sleep. You're not able to exercise. So that that's okay. Uh, and uh, growth mindset is, is very important. We, we, we try to help patients with that, okay? We have a lot, patients are very techy, savvy right now, and uh, they like to monitor things. There are many apps available. Um, this could be a, another talk about that, but uh, people can track calories, can track your exercise, and uh, we encourage patients to do that if that will be helpful for them. The same thing to check blood sugars for patients with diabetes. 
uh, briefly here. I think we are almost done here. But the medications, do we use medications for weight loss and for diabetes? Absolutely. So these are just some examples of medications that we have available that can cause an average of weight loss from 2% to 16%. Uh, and um, we are using more and more because that's those medications are good for you. And some medications for diabetes, it's not only will control your diabetes, not only will help you lose weight, but also protect your heart, protect your kidneys. So we are using that quite often. And these are some examples. Um, this is a busy slide here, but talk about some of the medications for diabetes. Old medications can cause weight gain. So we are trying to avoid those medications where we are using the newest one that uh, besides some benefits on the heart or kidney, we also help you to lose weight. And why are we not going to do that? Uh, avoid it, use the insulin and also cause weight loss. So we are using this more and more uh, often. Uh, so final final thoughts. Uh, I, I want to leave some time for discussion and, and questions and answers here. Uh, obesity and diabetes are intrinsically connected. When we treat diabetes, we also treat obesity. And the ultimate goal for weight loss, having the weight loss, less medications for diabetes, better diabetes control. Uh, we use medications that will be helpful for weight loss for diabetes, avoiding some of the old ones that can cause weight gain. And uh, lifestyle changes is always a priority, okay? Behavior modification is always a priority more than anything else. And uh, those pillars of weight management, nutrition, exercise, appetite control, stress management, and sleep. Uh, um, we also want to to finalize here, obesity is a chronic disease. There is different representations. Patients are presented differently. Obesity is secondary to the failure of energy regulation, and that's the weight set point that I explained to, for, uh, to you. Uh, and uh, we want to, when you treat the, the obesity, we don't want to go to a diet. We want to actually change that set point down. Okay, uh, and every patient is different. Uh, so. The beauty of a medicine is to, to try to, to understand that. And uh, when you talk to the patient, uh, you will realize uh, interventions are things that, that will work for the patient that may be different from the other patient. So every patient is different. But we want to try to find a common ground and, and get patients to, to their goals. I think with that, I should be, yeah, that's it. I think this is my last slide. Uh, so I'm done with the presentation a little bit early, so I have time to go over some questions and answers now. Thanks so much. Thank you, Dr. Grabler. Thank you. Okay. So um, there was one question in the Q&A. Do you also work with people who have uh, Hashimoto's? Yes, absolutely. So Hashimoto uh, thyroiditis or Hashimoto disease is an uh, autoimmune process, actually one of the most common autoimmune process in the uh, in the medicine uh, that will cause like uh, the thyroid to stop working and uh, so they will need replacement some patients will end up gaining weight over time and so we need to replace the thyroid but on top of that there are other things that we, we should do to make sure that patients will feel better so yes we see patients with Hashimoto thank you um, so some of the questions that were sent in ahead of time one of them everybody want, always wants to know with um, spot reduction how do I lose my belly fat? Okay, yes. So sometimes you don't, you don't have control exactly where you are losing uh, the fat, correct? So when you do, for example, diets, like caloric restriction diet, you lose weight everywhere, but you not lose only fat, you also lose the muscle. So we need to be aware. And in the beginning of diets, sometimes patients will lose water too. So there is a lot of water retention or there is a, like some bowel retention as well and they uh, end up cleaning up. So so there is a lot of ways that you're gonna lose uh, weight with that. So you cannot specifically go to this or that. Uh, it's difficult to do this. So that's the reason that I thought I said a lot about the exercise, correct? Because as you lose weight with some caloric restriction and eating better, you also going to increase your metabolic rate building muscle. And when you build muscle, then you have a little bit more control where you want to build the muscle. As you build muscle in that location, you will be burning uh, fat as well. So, you know, if you do weights or 
the resistance training, more here or in your belly, more core, all those things will help you to, to go to a specific location. Diet by itself, uh, it, it's all over. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, it, it, this is a really comprehensive approach you have. And um, looking at all your different tiles of all the things that go into weight loss, um, it comes back to food again and kind of meeting patients where they're at with what kind of diet, if you want to call it, is best for them. We got a lot of questions about the keto diet. Sure. <laughs> yes, we, it's, um, it, it is a... Um, it's uh, something uh, you know trending now. Keto diet is the same of uh, intermittent fasting and things like that. And the, my approach is this: uh, if you tried that in the past, you did well. Why not? We'll do that for sure. If you haven't tried and you want to see what happens, why not? Uh, we certainly can do that. Some patients can do very well on keto diet. Some patients will not. But the secret here is. How are you going to transition that later? So what happens with the keto diet? So keto diet pretty much is a low, very low carb diet, 20, 25 grams of carbs. So patients with diabetes, 20 grams per day, wow, that's awesome, correct? They will require minimal insulin, blood sugars will improve. So that's good. That's fine. But, but you have to monitor this. You have to check labs because you go keto diet. You, so you can have just three things when you're eating, protein, fat, or carbs. So if you have less carbs, you're going to have to increase your fat or protein. There is no other way. So some patients put pressure in other organs. So it's not unusual sometimes to increase liver function tests. We have to monitor the, this. Uric acid can increase kidney. So all those things you monitor patients on keto diet. And it's difficult to sustain forever. Okay. So how long are you going to do that? Two, three months, four months, six months? patients are different we will help them to do that and again remember they're not going to be losing weight forever at some point it's going to slow down and then what are we going to do after that then you're going to go and stop and go back so then the secret comes what is the transition okay we need to transi transition to another type of diet or something like that so you usually start adding slowly some carbs increasing that and modify the, the, the composition of the protein, fat, and, and, and then the patient will have that weight plateau, but you're not going to have weight regain. We will okay with that for a few months, and then later on, let's consider something else, you know, or you go back to keto or you do something. You cannot be doing the same thing always. You need to change. It's a very dynamic thing. Yeah. And, and I think the takeaway is if you are considering the keto diet, do it under the direction and the assistance of a, a physician and a dietitian, the team. Of yes, them. yes. Pota potassium will go down. You need replacement. You, you know, you want to do the right way. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, th there's pop-ups showing up. If you want, are interested in a consultation with an endocrinologist, um, you can just you can sign up for that, and somebody from the institute will reach out to you. So, um, I'm sure Dr. Griebler's one of the physicians that you. Um, can try and get a consult with. So I think that about wraps it up. I don't see any other questions in the Q and A. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Griebler. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yes. So for the participants, um, our next talk is, and you get a little break here, is at uh, two o'clock. And so now you get a little break. You. Um, want to get a comfortable chair for the next presentation because it's the yoga ne demonstration and we want you to join along. So we'll see you at two o'clock. Restrooms are down the hall and the vending machines down the other hall. All right. See you later.